week full of impacting items. Let's hope it translates into a significant move when it comes to gold prices. Hello, everyone. Monty here, Market Analyst IG with another technical cheat sheet video where we take a look at key technical indicators for this one. Not necessarily going to be the deciding factor in terms of formulating the overview, though. The reason why we do it, though, kind of prep those strategies for both conformance as well as contrarian to prior to the volatile moves actually were outperforming. We'll get to why that was the case. Levels on both daily and weekly timeframes, which are going to need a lot of adjusting uh, because of all the volatile moves that have been occurring, especially if that volatility persists. Where fund note traders stand, we're going to go ahead and plot sentiment onto the chart to find out exactly where retail traders shifted from majority buy to majority sell, which is a rare, rare occurrence when it comes to gold prices, as well as looking at uh, COT speculators, where they stand in precious metals in general. And yes, fundamental considerations, which have meant that there have been some sizable margins in terms of pricing and means that when it comes to its underlying, still a chance for significant volatility. Let's go ahead and get started. Gold, weekly time frame price above all its main weekly short and long-term moving averages. You got a DMI. Ooh, I mean, look at that. Look, look at that nice gap between, I've plotted it here on uh, uh, this courtesy of uh, IG's trading platform. You can see the gap between the, the, the uh, positive DI and the negative DI. You got an ADX that by one calculation, well in trending territory by another, not far off it. If you want to take the average and say that net Therefore, it is in trending territory, so be it. The, the technical boxes are taking off of a separate separate calculation, but that's the reason why you might see a little bit of a change there. You got an RSI that's not quite yet there in overbought territory and price at the upper end of the Bollinger Bands. What about on the daily time frame? Price falling back because it's pulled back slightly, no longer above all its main short-term moving averages, but still, still above all its main long-term ones. A DMI that's in positive territory, an ADX well in trending territory, an RSI that was in overbought territory, falling back out of it, brought it down over here, as well as price no longer at the upper end of what have been some seriously widening uh, uh, bands. So I'm going to start off with the, with a technical overview on the weekly time frame. In fact, for the weekly and the daily, we're putting it at volatile. This has a lot to do with historical technical considerations. You can see the technical cheat sheet video for USDJPY to get an idea as to why that is. And if we are going to factor in when I get to the fundamentals, I mean, this is a technical cheat sheet, but there is a significant margin to work with, similar to what we used, if you saw the technical cheat sheet for WTI for oil, uh, you would have noticed that the matter of, especially on a daily time frame, that back when we had more geopolitical risk premium, it just meant that you ended up with a lot more moves on the daily time frame that could easily kick things in one direction or another. With gold, there's something, you know, there's something lurking beneath. I'll get to that later on the fundamental considerations, but do more just on historical technical considerations alone. It's 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 got a volatile overview. But the thing is, is that it's had a volatile overview for quite some time because of historical technical considerations. And for a long time, it was actually contrarians that did a lot better than conformance. It's only recently because we had the volatile move that conformance were able to get a lot more follow through on most weeks. But otherwise, it was actually a, a bit of a struggle for them. But for conformance strategies under volatile overview, you're essentially anticipating that the levels won't hold. And that means you're going for breakout strategies, whether buy breakout off the first resistance or sell breakout off the first support. And uh, contrarians are going to be reversals. That's selling the first resistance after reversal. You don't want to fade the move otherwise, especially with an uptick in volatility, you're going to get stopped out very quickly. So you want to wait until you know it breaches the level. And then as it's coming back down, if it comes back down, you then initiate a sell at the first resistance. and and uh, some similar concept, but the opposite when it comes to buying off the first support. You want to wait until it breaks beneath and after it comes back. And obviously, with added volatility, you want to add more caution to it accordingly. Now, and the, the, the thing is that when it comes to the volatile overview, when there really is volatility, it's not necessarily a case of, of one versus the other, but there have been times where both have been able to outperform, provided it's not a fade strategy. Fading, they get stopped out. You know, that's the worst. I know that when it comes to a range trading situation, fades usually do the best. They're usually the most opportune. They get triggered more. And because, you know, if the market does indeed remain range bound, they actually do best. But under a volatile overview, fades do worst. And it's usually either or when it comes to uh, uh, breakouts and reversals. And that's the reason why when it comes to volatile overview, those are the only strategies we'll see in both conformance and training. Uh, but if you think that for whatever reason, that things are going to be calm or remain calm, or that's going to be range bound within this area, then yeah, you you could entertain a fade, but it's not under for a volatile overview. You're not going to find a fade strategy in, in either conformance uh, nor the contrarian cap. What about when it comes to between the RSP and first? Keep in mind these levels are going for the weekly. It takes some time to acclimatize to this recent volatility, and that's the reason why in the, in the beginning of a volatile move, breakouts do very very well, and then afterwards they start to struggle because now all of a sudden. Uh, levels have adjusted, uh, markets kind of got used to it, and therefore getting follow through past the first level becomes more difficult. But for the time being, the gap 33 and uh, from the first to the stop loss, depending on your risk reward, so at your discretion, I always say this, uh, it's at 16. What about when it comes to the daily time frame? Similar overview, shorter term levels, though, less likely to hold in the initial stages of volatility. So when you get that initial burst of volatility, less likely to hold 
but but levels do uh, adjust a lot more quickly on the daily time frame compared to the weekly because for the weekly you need more time. It's it's the weekly, right? So if you're taking it off of the past 10, 30, 50 weeks, for example, well, that's going to take more time to adjust compared to say 10, 30, or 50 days, depending on, on, on the calculation of those levels. But otherwise, overview and strategies are going to be identical. Same, same concept, though um, ideally you're considering buying after, in, in the case of the first support, you're considering buying after a significant reversal, uh, unless uh, that's if you're anticipating a bullish overview. So if you think, if you're if you're saying to yourself, no, this is not a volatile overview, I'm going to take this as a bullish technical overview, you might want to, when it comes to going contrarian, don't just buy off of with a simple reversal, maybe go for a very significant one. Otherwise, you get, you, you know, you risk getting stopped out. And uh, those of you that want to work off of the second levels, you could consider a, a reversal or a fade. But I, I would say initially, when you first get that initial burst of, of, of volatility, stick with reversals off the second levels, only when levels start to climatize and start to get used to it, then you can finally say, okay, maybe I can now go for a fade. So that's that's afterwards. Now, the gap between RSP and the first, because it's a volatile overview, this is for the start of the week on Monday. You're watching this on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Feel free to adjust accordingly. And if there's a major volatile move only on their volatile overview, can you change it even within the day? Just because levels, you know, we, the one thing you know under a volatile overview is that levels don't hold generally, right? So the gap between RSP and first 13 and uh, from the first to the SL, we're looking at six, again, depending on your risk reward ratio. So what about when it comes to sentiment? Now, the thing is, is that IG clients have a tendency to want to be to the buy side. I'll, I'll plot onto the chart uh, shortly. But right now, majority sell territory, that pullback has managed to, to, to help reduce sentiment week on week. From the start of last week, 59% to 55%. It won't take much in terms of a pullback for them to shift back to majority buy. And when it comes to COT speculators, still majority to the buy side, still in extreme buy territory at 78%. So you had an increase in both longs and short positions. What about when it comes to the other precious metals? A lot of times you want to look at that, just get a general idea. Silver, the majority buy, and they've been upping that buy significantly and taking up the 72%. Those gains obviously uh, work to their favor. When it comes to Platinum, they only briefly, I mean, now they're at 55%. Outer circles is for the latest report. Inner circles from the report before that. You can see that they were at 52%. Slight sell shifted to majority buy. They actually were in majority buy for most of the time. It's only they briefly went majority sell. And then after now, they're coming back into majority buy territory. Whereas Palladium, it's been a story of heavy to extreme sell territory throughout this period. So let's go ahead and plot uh, uh, sentiment onto the chart. Blue dotted line, IG clients. Green dotted line, COT speculators. That red dotted line, whenever they go below, it means they are majority short. Whenever they're above, it means that they're majority buy. You can see COT speculators majority buy this entire time. You do have those momentum guys going with the move, though I have to say, whenever it's been to the upside, they've been a little bit slow compared to what we see with some of the other products, whether indices or even FX, in terms of adjusting and getting in whenever it's to the buy side. So maybe they're a little bit skeptical about these gains, but we'll see. They're, they're obviously staying extreme buy, but they're a little bit skeptical about raising up that, that buy bias. They haven't really been following the flows as quickly and as swiftly. I will zoom into the time frame to give you guys an idea what I mean by that. IG clients, majority to the buy side, going to extreme territory back when prices dip. They, they timed all that right. And now, by the way, this right here, weekly time frame, we're taking an average. So it's what the sentiment was throughout the week, but they actually briefly went sell right here and went back up on one, on one or two of the days. Uh, but for the week, they stayed just above it. So this is just an average, but technically they did shift briefly and go back into majority. Uh, and then afterwards, went, you know, when price came back down, went back to majority buy territory and they've been raging for, for quite a bit. And then afterwards, then came this big move right over here, this burst of volatility. And you can see that they went into majority short territory. I'm going to zoom into the daily time frame just so you can see exactly where it happened. Uh, so COT speculators, as I mentioned, you know, when it started to move up and stuff, you did see, you know, down and then up a little bit, but they've kind of, they've been very, very cautious about taking it further beyond these levels at the stage. Of course, they are already an extreme buy, so how much more you want to take it? Um, but they have, even you look historically, there has always been a little bit of a, of a lag in terms of them wanting to get in on any uh, uh, price gains when it comes to gold. Whereas when it comes to IG clients, you can see right over here at the start of March, uh, beginning of March, boom, you had this big move, longs got out, shorts initiated. Uh, it went past the key uh, resistance level, and and ever, you know ever since it's moved back up, they they were very very cautious. Though. They didn't go. You would think if this was an index, they probably go towards heavy or even extreme sell territory. But by default, clients want to stay majority to the buy side when it comes to gold. Historically, always looking for an excuse to stay to the buy side. Very rare for them to be in majority sell territory, and very rare for them to be in majority sell territory for this long. What about fundamental considerations? Well, here's the thing: it's it's it's, it's a week full of central bank. Uh, policy decisions. But when it comes to the, the dollar, you got the FOMC anticipated to hold. But the thing is that a lot of people are going to look at their dot plot with 
pricing data hotter last week than anticipated, whether you're looking at CPI, uh, producer prices, or even trade pricing data. Um, you know, there's that, that are they going to come out? They're obviously going to come out with the I'm not in a hurry theme, but it's also a, a matter of them potentially changing the dot plot. So it's not about three cuts, penciling in three cuts this, this year, but maybe taking it down to two. There isn't much of a margin to move it from three to two, by the way. And the CME's Fed Watch anticipating a hold in May as well. And June, it's it's getting towards getting close to 50-50, still by a majority as of doing this video, anticipating a rate cut, but it's becoming a bit of a struggle. So that's something to note in terms of how uh, um, market pricing is going to shift when it comes to rate cut likelihoods. And there is there is the matter of some other fundamental considerations that are coming up. The whole the monetizing the debt trade, I know this sort of came up and you kind of saw some stuff uh, priced against the agreement so, sort of jump and surge at the same time. And the part of that people went, oh, that's because you know this against uh, you, you got the, you know, the, these rising fiscal deficits, no way the U.S. is going to be able to pay off this debt, it's going to have to be monetizing the debt and so on and so forth. That whole conversation started to come up. Uh, you know, what is it, uh, a trillion dollars, uh, you know, the, the deficit's rising, that's rising a trillion dollars every hundred days. Uh, that whole conversation, of course, is, is going to get people to think to themselves, oh, maybe I should consider gold. And it does factor into a bit of that volatility. In terms of ETFs, it's been a general story of outflows, if you look at investors. And Central bank purchases, though, has been a general story that there have been some decent, decent months where you had strong, strong purchases, strong physical, physical purchases at times. And then, of course, people bringing up the whole geopolitical risk as well as sanctions that has kind of led people to think, OK, maybe I need to go ahead and hold gold at this time. The thing is, though, those can be very, very difficult to price in. So there's a lot of room for, for, for massive moves when it comes to gold. And, and you might think, oh, is that, is that kind of the, the underlying that that's kind of keeping the overview a little bit volatile if you want to take into account these considerations? Not exactly. The real one, actually, real yields. If you look at the, I know a lot of people are going to bring up that chart between uh, uh, real yields, you know, US 10-year, as well as, as gold prices. And you're thinking to yourself, well, based on that formula, prices should be a lot, lot, lot lower than what they are now. They should have been in a, in a bear trend, so to speak. This is, of course, the matter. A lot of people are bringing up some of those other items like physical purchases, central bank purchases, and geopolitical risk, saying that this is the reason why gold prices can defy gravity or defy its historic formula, if you will, um, but for how long? And, and you know, if any of these factors do change, you could end up with some seriously volatile moves. And what we saw in the, in the past few weeks, nothing in comparison. And that's the reason why you want to retain that caution and keep an open mind that even if things are bullish, fine, you can always go to the, you know, again, a bull average you're looking at buying after a significant reversal off the first support, going for buy breakouts, so on and so forth, just buying and holding, so on and so forth. But you want to be very, very cautious on any sort of very, very volatile up or down, pullback type of move. And that's the reason why the overview is going to stay volatile for the foreseeable future. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Good luck out there.